and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, freaks and geeks, trolls and derps alike. Come on, babies. I am Mullet Mike Hardcastle with the S <laughs> Gaming Network and Full Screen, bringing you Creepy Gaming. In case you missed it or didn't happen to hear about it for some weird reason, this is the Season 7 Season Opener Double Feature. Today, we will be talking about Resident Evil 7. Or, or Biohazard 7 Resident Evil. Just depends on where you live. That was clever. If you didn't see it, then check out the first episode of Season 7 where I cover all the Resident Evil games up until this point. Or all the numbered ones anyways. Alright, I've been teasing it for months now. I'm not going to keep you waiting any longer. Ladies and gentlemen, turn the lights down and the volume up as we journey into some creepy games. Season seven. It was years for Resident Evil fans to get another numbered sequel. I didn't think it was going to happen. Yet. Here we are. Most people didn't know what to think about it when the trailer was first released. This looked like the furthest departure Capcom has taken with the series yet. Little did we know, this title was more like the original Resident Evils than we may have originally thought. I'll quickly go over the story for those who are unfamiliar, and don't worry, I won't get into spoilers until later when we talk about theories. And as always, I will give a fair warning with an official spoiler alert before I do. In this game, we play as Ethan, an all-new character. His wife, Mia, went missing. But after three years, Ethan receives this strange message. Ethan. You were right. I did lie to you. I shouldn't have. <laughs> All I can say is that if you get this, stay away. You start the game in the swamps of Louisiana looking for Mia. The creepiness then slowly sets in. While in the swamps, you come across the old Baker place. The stage is set and scares ensue. It's a perfect setup. Short, sweet, to the point. Here's your weapons, some herbs, some rationed ammo. Good luck! I like that we play as Ethan, considering he's just a civilian. No police officer, no stars member, no secret service. You're just a husband hellbent on finding his wife. While the game took a cosmetically different approach, many of the classic survival horror beats are there. The Old Baker Home is a great callback to the Spencer Mansion from the first game. The puzzles were a nice reminder of the original Resident Evil trilogy. As a matter of fact, this game has quite a few creepy easter eggs and references to past games in it. Let's discuss a few of these. The main hall of the Baker Home is very reminiscent of the mansion's main corridor. Not just that, but the game takes a little extra incentive here. In that very same room, you can find a painting of none other than the Arkele Mountains themselves. While in the same room there, in the main hall, look for a newspaper with a headline that reads, 20 missing in two years. Eagle-eyed gamers would see the article was written by Elisa Ashcroft. If the name Ashcroft sounds familiar, well, it should. The character Elisa was originally in the spin-off Resident Evil Outbreak. Another easter egg that I thought was a nice touch also falls into the theory category as well. One of the only complaints I've heard about the game is that it doesn't tie in to the rest of the Resident Evil series that well. But just like the shadow puzzles in the game, it's a matter of perspective and where to look. Ethan even comments with a little rationality when he asks rhetorically who built this. 
Well, if you look in the attic area, you will find a particular note that reveals who built the puzzles. The answer? Chamberlain Construction. Chills literally ran down my spine when I figured it out. Chamberlain Construction was the same company that designed the puzzles in the original Spencer Mansion from the first game. Oh, what tangled webs we weave. Now, I do plan on discussing some of the game's scarier moments and give an overall review, but I'd say that the majority of my viewers prefer Easter eggs and theories, so let me address these first. That being said, though, I'm about to go into spoiler territory. So official creepy gaming spoiler! The main theory I want to address is regarding the game's ending. An umbrella helicopter shows up to rescue you. But the logo is now different, as if the company has rebranded and maybe changed their diabolical ways. What looks like STARS members rappel down from the helicopter as one of the figures slowly approaches you. It is none other than Chris Redfield himself. But here's where it gets strange. A lot of people question this because he simply says Redfield. Although, I'm pretty sure it's been confirmed by now that this is, in fact, Chris. But, did anyone notice the gear Redfield was wearing? More importantly, his helmet. This ties in with Resident Evil 2, so again, go watch my anthology video if you haven't already. RE2 featured a minigame that introduced the Boba Fett of the Resident Evil series, Hunk. Quit snickering! Joseph! I know. Hunk. Anyway, there is a theory floating around suggesting that the big revelation of the game's ending was that Hunk was really Chris Redfield this entire time. If this theory is true, then it means that Chris was around during the events of Raccoon City in Resident Evil 2. Some fans of the series were let down by the ending, but if this theory is proven to be true, then the revelation makes it that much more special. Alright, now that we're well into spoiler territory, let's talk some more creepiness. The Bakers! The Baker family! Holy functional alcoholic Batman! While being an obvious homage to the family from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the Bakers stand out of the shadows as their own individual characters. Let's go through them one by one, shall we? First up, there's Jack Baker, the father. He was a former Marine who now can somehow regenerate. The answer to why he has that ability is revealed as the game goes on. You can find out more of this big brute's background from several pictures, newspaper articles, and yes, notes. Notes! Why is it always notes? Notes, 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 notes. Alright, look. Oh, to be fair, we have to give credit where credit's due because Resident Evil was one of the first games to actually introduce stupid notes into survival horror games. So, can't be too mad. Wait a minute. Of course I can be mad! It's your fault, Resident Evil! Give credit where credit's due. Give blame where blame is due. Ah. Next up, wife to Jack, Mama Baker, come on down. First name, Marjorie. Her ability, if you didn't notice, is to transform into this giant mutant fly woman with an extremely nasty larva sack, let me tell ya. Oh, I think I lost my appetite. The character design in this game is so disturbing. It's one of the game's creepier attributes. The new RE engine definitely adds a lot to this new installment. Moving on, there's the daughter, Zoe Baker. She's the one that tries to help you get the antidote and escape. Then there's her ever-charming brother, Lucas. He rides the lines of genius and madman. He's obviously a psychopath, but we learn throughout the game that he's an engineer of sorts, even winning several awards and trophies as a child. 
Sticky shout out to the Maddie Cakes Project for pointing out to me that Lucas actually escapes. The game ends with him unaccounted for. The Baker family was obviously infected by a virus transferred by Evie, who I'll talk about in a minute. The family deep down wants to be cured, as we see in this weird cutscene. They just want to be a normal family again. It really makes them quite sympathetic by the end of the game. If you remember, though, Lucas didn't want to get reverted back. He didn't want the cure. This leaves me intrigued to see if this storyline gets followed up. Last but definitely not least, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the main event, Evie! Or Evelyn. She's the creepy little paranormal girl. She's also the old lady in the baker's house we just assume to be grandma. To try to avoid any confusion, I'll just use the name Evie in reference to the little creepy girl and Evelyn for her older self. Some fans of the series felt that Resident Evil 7 already looked too much like Silent Hill PT, but the addition of the quote-unquote ghost girl went too far for some folks. Personally speaking, I love the addition of Evie. She took the creepiness to new heights. While yes, she is a little more paranormal as far as like ghosts go than most Resident Evil characters, her condition, we'll call it, is at least backed up by some science. So that made it up for me. In a game where you have these boss fights with supernatural mutants, Evie suddenly doesn't seem so far-fetched now. She has some great moments in this game, both as Evie and as the elderly Evelyn. I gotta ask, though, was the revelation spoiled for anyone else? If you watch the game's startup cinematic cutscene, it clearly shows Evelyn moving. See it? Right there. Look. Even with it spoiled, it didn't take anything away from it for me. I felt the developers handled the use of Evie very well for the most part. She was subtle and wasn't overused. Joseph! In closing, I'd like to give a really brief review. As I mentioned earlier, there are some who feel this is too much of a departure from the series. Personally, I thought it was a great return to formula, all while adding new aspects. That's what a good sequel is, right? Capcom took a risk with this game, much like they did with 4. They got the setting right with this one, which tends to make or break the game. It had a real dark tone, not just mere jump scares. Overall, I really enjoyed it. I need to mention too that this is one of the first PlayStation 4 games that the VR was optional. Usually it's one or the other, but with RE7 you could play with or without the headset. I played in both fashions, alternating throughout the game. I will say this, without VR, it's just a good old survival horror game. But VR cranks up the creepiness. A lot. Now I'm not saying it's like rush of blood scary, but it definitely makes 
all the difference in the world. It's really almost like comparing apples to oranges. Overall, damn good game. I'm happy to see the series make a grand return. Because of the tone, atmosphere, music, design, Evie, the bakers, the many theories, and the horrifying VR experience, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard has done more than enough to forever go down in creepy gaming history. Season 7 is off to a great start. Thank you all so much for help making this all possible, because without you, there is no me. i just like to point out that I got a lot of stuff planned for this season of Creepy Gaming. That's right, we have 100 episodes coming up this season. Just wow. Not only that, I'm also going to try to make a point to shake things up, change formulas around a little bit, and go back to the show's roots and follow more Easter eggs and creepypasta. Everyone, thank you all so much for watching. I am Mullet My Card Castle with the Battle Gaming Network saying, Sticky, stay creepy. Thanks for watching. Peace.